as we gather together this morning in your presence. Let the Holy Spirit lead us into the anointing service of this morning. Give me freedom behind this pulpit, Lord. Let me not be bound or hindered or restricted in any way. I pray that every spirit here will bow to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. You may have your seats. I'd like to say a big welcome to all our friends who are watching us all over the world. And those who are watching us, uh, especially here in the United States. Our message this morning, the text is taken from the book of Judges, the 19th chapter. Judges chapter 19. We're going to read a fairly long passage of scripture from verse 16 all the way down. I'll tell you when to stop. This is one message God gave me in the month of March. And uh, this is a time for me to bring it across to you. This anointing service. Judges chapter 19. I'm going to read from verse 16. I will read the uh, even number verses. Let's read the odd number verses together. And behold, there came an old man from his walk out of the field at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. For the men of the place were Benjamites. Read. And he said unto him, we are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Ephraim, from thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord. And there is no man that receiveth me to house. Verse 19, read. Uh-huh. Yes. The old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever let all thy wants be upon me, only lodge not in the street. Read. <sighs> now as they were making their hearts merry, behold the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and speak to the master of the house. The old man saying, bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. Read. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man, do not so vile a thing. Read. Mm. Mm. Yes. All the night. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. Read. <laughs> and he said unto her, Up, oh, let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass. And the man rose up and got him onto his place. Read. <laughs> a 
And it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done. Now, even from the day that the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt unto this day, consider of it. Take advice and speak your minds. May God add his blessing to what we have read this morning in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by going over the story we just read. It's explicit enough. There are so many things we can say. There are so many things we can preach on using this passage. But I want to zero in this morning on verse 19. Let's read it together. Let's go. Yet, there is both straw and provender for our asses. And there is bread. There is wine also for me. And for thy handmaid. And for the young man, which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. There is no want of anything. Let me first of all disabuse your mind regarding the word concubine. Because you might be wondering, how can he be so religious and have a concubine? Back in them days, there was nothing wrong in having a concubine. A concubine basically was a Gentile captive that you take in war and you turn into your wife. A concubine is a foreign slave that you bought and you turn into a wife. A concubine, usually if you marry someone from uh, Canaan, whether they are bond or they are free, they are regarded as concubines. The difference between a wife and a concubine was less marked among the Hebrews than among us today. Uh, there was no moral stigma back in them days in having any of these people as your concubine. The difference between a concubine and a wife is that you can get rid of a concubine for any reason at any time without a bill of divorcement. But a wife you cannot divorce without a bill of divorcement. So I just wanted to give you that background knowing where this man is coming from. He probably has a real Hebrew wife. And this is just a lady that he got either bought or a Canaanite or a captive that is referred to as a concubine. They came into the city looking for a place to lodge. They found no place. And finally an old man looked at them and said, come stay with me. Why are you in the, on the street? It's late. And they say, we've tried to find somewhere to sleep, but no one in this city is willing to take us in. And then he made a statement. He said, I don't need anybody's help. I won't be a liability to anybody that allows me to come in. I have bread. I have wine. I have food for the animals. All I need is a place to lay down my head. And of course, you remember the story we heard. In the middle of the night, the sons of Belial, the homosexuals in the city said, the man in your house, we want to know him. And he said, no, you can't do this. I have a maiden in the house. Take her. Or if you don't want my daughter, you can also take his concubine. And they said, okay, we'll settle for the concubine. And they dragged the lady out. Abused and defiled her all night and went their way at the daybreak. After they left, the woman struggled to get to the front porch where she collapsed and died. And in the morning, the guy woke up and saw his wife outside and said, honey, get up, let's go. But there was no answer. 
carried the girl, put her on the ass, took her home, cut her into 12 pieces, sent it to the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, I need an answer to this one. And it led to a serious war that wiped out the Benjamins. But that's not my focus for this afternoon. I'm not here preaching to condemn this young man. But I'm giving you a lesson. Plan and a prayer to pray. This man in verse 19 we read said old man I have straw I have provision for the asses there is bread there is wine also the young men have what to eat the handmaid have what to eat as a matter of fact there is no want of anything I want you to note that. My sermon this morning has to do with the last statement this young man made. He said, I've got everything I need. There is no want of anything. He looked around and he concluded that he needed nothing. He looked at what he will need for that and what he will need to take off morning. And he said to himself, Sir, I don't need anything. <laughs> but something was very, very important that he needed. But that thing never crossed his mind. But in less than 24 hours, he learned it a very, 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 very hard way. You know what? We often make the same mistake. If you come before a servant of God and you ask for prayer and the servant of God says, young man, what do you need? You are likely to reply, I need straw. I need provender for the asses. I need bread. I need wine. I need silver. And I need gold. And the minister looks at you and says, what else? And you say, what else? What else? I don't need anything else. All I need is all I told you. Like this man in our scripture this morning, you are likely to say, man of God, I need nothing else. Today, today, I want us to pray. And if it's okay, if it's okay, I want to anoint you with oil. For the one thing that we usually forget, <laughs> that we need, because this man, less than 24 hours, in fact, I dare say that less than 12 hours after he had said that he needed nothing, guess what happened? His concubine was defiled and his concubine was killed. Listen to me and listen to me very well on this first Sunday of this month. After you think that you have everything and lack nothing, there is still one thing that you need. It is called divine protection. Divine protection for you Divine protection for your wife. Divine protection for your husband. Divine protection for your children. If you lack divine protection, you lack everything. 
possession of silver and gold without divine protection is like having nothing. Possession of wine and bread without divine protection is like having nothing. Possession of horses. Possession of asses. <laughs> without divine protection is like having nothing. Haven't you heard that in him we live? In him we move. In him we have our being. Look, you exist not because of the silver and gold that you have. You exist not because of the horses and the asses that God has blessed you with. Without divine protection, we cannot live, we cannot move, we cannot have our being, our bread, our wine, our asses, our horses, our silver, our gold mean nothing without divine protection. On the 15th of March, actually 10th of March, it's about two months ago, 157 people boarded a brand new airplane in an African city called Addis Ababa. If you are looking for a plane to board and they say this airplane is brand new, you feel secured. So they got on the plane in Addis Ababa, short flight, headed to Nairobi, Kenya. Many that boarded that plane were men and women of great substance. People that owned silver. People that owned gold. People that had asses. People that had horses. Experienced captain. Experienced cabin crew. Boarded that brand new airplane that day. But one thing that did not board the plane that day was divine protection. Consequently, six minutes into the flight, the pilots lost control of a brand new airplane. <laughs> I can safely say, and I can safely assume, that many people got on that plane without a prayer. You know what your problem is? Listen to Bishop. You know what my problem is? Assumption. Assumption. If I ask you how many of you prayed before you left your house today, you just assume. Protection is automatic. How many of you prayed when you ate breakfast today and blessed the food? Oh. You still have to pray before you bless food and say the grace? Go and ask President Bush. Not quite six months in office. President Bush the second was eating pretzels in the White House. Saddam Hussein cannot get him. The people in Afghanistan could not reach him. But he choked on a pretzel. And you will have heard that the president died if it was not for the mercy and for the grace of God. I can understand why David prayed. In Psalm 121, he said, The Lord preserve you from all evil. And the Lord preserve your soul. May the Lord preserve your going out. And may the Lord preserve your coming in from this time forth forevermore. It's fun. We leave the house forgetting we need protection. We leave the office, forgetting we need protection. We leave the church, <laughs> forgetting we need protection. We go to the store, <laughs> forgetting we need protection. We go on a journey, 
forgetting we need protection. Every day, you need protection. You know what they used to say in my village? There is just one step between you and death. Just one step. It's not two steps. It's not three steps. My prayer for you is that divine protection will be upon you. That is what I want to pray for you this morning. That everywhere you go, the protection of God will cover you. You will go in peace, you will return in peace. Your children will go in peace and they will return in peace. That's why even Christians and Muslims in my village, they pray a prayer. <laughs> they say, God, we are going out today. We are going to look for what to eat. Let us not come in contact with what we eat us. I pray for you. As you go out after this morning to eat, you will not find what will eat you. You will not find what will consume you. You will not find what will destroy you. In the mighty, 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 mighty name of Jesus. This thing is serious. Ay, ay, ay. We take it for granted. We take it for granted. That's why when Jesus was teaching the disciples what is now known as the Lord's Prayer, pray it with me. It says, Our Father, uh -huh, which art in heaven, uh -huh, hallowed be thy name, uh -huh, thy kingdom come, uh -huh, thy will be done on earth, uh -huh, as it is in heaven, uh -huh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation. What is the next one? But deliver us. Sit down there. Sit down there. If Jesus said, pray that you be delivered from evil, you go on assuming that it is automatic. That you don't need to pray about it. Jesus knows the world very, very well. Jesus knows the powers that operate in the world very, very well. As a matter of fact, when he said, pray that I would deliver you from evil, it is implied, ladies and gentlemen, that there is evil in the world. Oh, there is evil in the world. And if you pray daily, you need to pray to be divinely protected from it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm telling you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But do you know there was a man that missed the flight from Addis Ababa. He missed the flight. He missed the flight. You know how he missed the flight? It was his wife. Do you have a wife? You have a wife? So I don't need to tell you what wives do. It is the last minute when you are ready to go. Turn to a lady and say, is it not the truth? It's talking the truth now. It's talking the truth. And then you get into your automobile. Always. They say, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I forgot something. I forgot. I say, Jesus. My flight. My flight is almost taken off. And then she runs inside. And they say, oh, I forgot the key. I forgot the key. The key is the one in the ignition. Please remove the key in the ignition. Now you are going nowhere. Even if you are angry to go, you cannot go. She takes the key of the, of the car. The bunch of keys that has the key to the house. She goes in. Have you? Do you have a wife? They, they are never in a hurry. She just goes in and says, Oh, I feel like using the toilet. I don't want to use the toilet on the road. Turn to a lady and say, He's talking about you now. He's talking about you. I don't know what delayed that man, what the lady did that delayed her, that delayed him. But she delayed him. And guess what? You know it, man. 
He was mad. I bet he never said a word on the way to the airport. I bet inside his mind he cursed her father, cursed her mother, cursed the day he got married to this woman that is making me to miss a, an important flight to Nairobi, Kenya. But divine protection was at work. Divine protection was at work. Can I say to you, better be careful about how you complain. Better be careful about how you fight people. Because many, 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 many times, all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. Shout, I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. They got to the airport in Addis Ababa. And they got to the front desk. And the people at the front desk said, you are just coming? He said, yes. He said, the gate has closed. The flight is taxiing to take off. He looked at his wife. You see now? See yourself. It's Africans that do that thing. What does it mean? It means your teeth has problems. So he rebooked the flight. And that took some time. As they were exiting the airport, the announcement came on the PA system that the flight that they missed just crashed. And everybody on it died. Somehow, somehow, you will escape death. I said, somehow, somehow, you will escape death. God will use your wife. God will use your husband. God will use your children. God will protect you. Shall fire. Shall fire. Shall fire. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I've come to anoint, anoint you this morning for divine protection. You need it all. And I need it. I don't care how anointed you are. You need divine protection. There was a man on that plane. May God, may God be with his wife. May God be with his children. Well known man. His name is Paul. Paul Addison. Was a prolific writer. He writes for Sahara Reporter. And he lectures in Canada. Well-loved man. Well-appreciated man. He stepped. I say, I pray for you. That as you go out, you are looking for what you will eat. May you not be eating before you get there. In the mighty name of Jesus. May God watch over you. May God protect you. May God keep you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout, I receive it. Say, I receive it. I said, I have come to anoint you this morning for divine protection day by day. Because though you move around thinking you need nothing, look at you. Though you move around thinking you don't need protection. But I know, I know, I know. Between you and death is just one step. You know what God did? God called Moses. He said, Moses, come. Moses, come. He said, Moses, tell Aaron, my priest, and his sons, that every day people come to the temple, that every day people gather in the temple, they must not let them go without pronouncing a particular blessing upon them. Now, you know the blessing. It's in the book of Numbers. Let me read it to you to save time. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron and his sons, saying, On this wise shalt thou bless the children of Israel. The very first note of that blessing in Numbers chapter 6, in verse 24, you know what it says? It says, The Lord bless you. What does it say after that? And the Lord keep you. Turn to somebody and pronounce it for them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Please turn to somebody else. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. 
Turn to another person and pray for them, please. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. Hey, my friends. Being blessed with asses and horses is not enough. <laughs> being blessed with silver and gold is not enough. Because if you are blessed, but you are not kept, it is like being empty. If you are blessed and not kept, it's like having nothing in this world. I pray for you as you leave this church this morning. May the blessing of the Lord follow you out. May the protection of the Lord follow you out. As the anointing oil touches you, may it be a mark of divine protection that will last you until you leave this world. In the mighty name of Jesus. In John chapter 17. Don't turn to it, I'll read it. In verse 15. Actually, the Lord was praying a lot of prayers. Specifically for the disciples. And specifically for the church. And then he got to verse 15. And made a statement. He said, I pray not. <laughs> that thou shouldest take them out of the world. So don't take them out of the world. Keep them in the world. In fact, <laughs> in fact they like the world. They like the world. You know, everybody's talking about heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> if I say, how many of you want to go to heaven? Every hand will be up. I say, good, you want to go to heaven? Okay, die right now. Say, no, ah, ah, ah. not so soon. You know, I look at the goodness and the kindness of God. If God loves us, he will have loved us to be with him right now. But he said, I know them. They like the world. They like the world. They like the world. So, Lord... Keep them in the world. But you know what he said? He said, I pray now that thou shouldest take them out of the world. I pray for you. Sudden accident will not take you out of the world. I pray for you. Arrows of the wicked will not take you out of the world. I pray for you. The will of the enemy will not take you out of the world. He said, I pray for you. Don't take them out of the world. But you know what he said in verse 15? He said, but... That thou shouldest keep them from what? From evil. So keep them from evil. Keep them from evil. Listen, folks. There is the evil inside this world. Targeting your house. There is an evil in this world. Targeting your automobile. There is an evil in this world. Targeting uh, a simple medical procedure simple medical procedure. I'm just going I will be back. And they never come back. There is an evil targeting the body. It was this my daughter sitting in the back that told me a story when I came back from Manila. I said, Bishop, I'm a nurse. We are surrounded by machines to keep people alive. EKG, MSG, MLG, KFG. Any machine, we have it. So, Bishop, you know what happened? One of our employees, a very seasoned nurse, just collapsed. She went to the hospital to take care of casualties. She herself became a casualty. It shall not be your portion. I said it shall not be your portion. The Lord will watch over you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will surround you with fire. So that's how the, 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 the I don't know whether it was a lady or a man collapsed. No machine could help. No experienced doctor could help. I can imagine someone who collapses in the park and has to be taken in an ambulance of a ride of 30 minutes to the hospital. This was right in the hospital, but divine protection was not there. Where you walk, may the Lord protect you. Where you drive, may the Lord protect you. As you get on the train, may the Lord protect you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the man said to the old man, I don't need anything. You don't need anything. You will find out in 12 hours or less that you need something. 
and it is divine protection. <laughs> a woman went to the grocery. Normal grocery. Who doesn't go to grocery? She got to the grocery. As she was walking the aisle, she did not know that somebody had dropped apple sauce in the aisle and broke the bottle. And as she was walking, picking her things, not looking to the ground, she slipped on the apple sauce. She's on a wheelchair now. She went, I'll be right back. I will be right back. I will be right back. She never came back. Rather, people went and visited her in the hospital. And by the time the story was finished, she will ended up on a wheelchair. As you go out on your feet, you will come back on your feet. You didn't hear my prayer. I said, as you go on your feet, you will come back on your feet. As you go in safety, you will come back in safety. Everybody said, divine protection. There's a congresswoman in Nassau County. Congresswoman. She was in her house. Oh, she was in her house. You know, you don't have to go out for death to take you. She was in her house. Inside her house. She just slept. That was all. Oh. Uh, can I ask you a question? How many times have you slept that you got up and there was nothing? Eh? How many times have you fallen? Even in the snow. And you had a little pain for two or three days. And you got up and you were fine. But that was not the case with this lady. Well known. Had plans for five years. For ten years. I will do this. I will do that. In the Nassau County. She was a congresswoman in Nassau County this. In Nassau County that. Guess what happened? When she fell. She hit her head. And she died. And people say. We just talked to her. We saw her in the office. Yeah. What happened to her? Uh, it was a moment when divine protection was not available. I pray for you. Divine protection will always be available for you. I pray for you. They won't say they saw you yesterday and they don't see you today. They won't say they just finished talking to you. And you just passed out. You will live long. You didn't hear my prayer. I said you will live long. You didn't hear my prayer. I said you will live long. <laughs> That's why I laugh. <laughs> I laugh oh, when people talk as if they are God. I laugh oh, when people talk as if they have tomorrow in control. And they talk to people. I'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Mm. Where is the grace of God? Where is the mercy of God? You know, what, you, you know what the man of God said? He said, those of you who say, today we'll go out. And tomorrow we'll go out. We'll buy this. We'll sell this. We'll do this. We'll do that. He said, who are you? Who are you? He said, you are fools. Instead of you saying, if the Lord wills. If the Lord keeps me, if the Lord protects me, except for the protection of God, we are all dead men. We are all dead women. That's why I want to pray for you. So you don't fall into the foolishness that this woman fell in, this man fell into when he said without thinking that I don't need anything. I have everything I need. You don't have everything you need, oh. You don't have everything you need, oh. You don't have everything you need, oh. You need divine protection. And God has been doing that. He has been keeping you. He has been protecting you. He has been watching over you. He has not allowed any evil to befall you. In fact, they are wondering in the pits of hell how you are still alive. They are wondering there. They are saying with all that we have done, with all the missiles, with all the attacks, she's still standing. He is still standing by the grace of God. I will continue to stand by the grace of God. I will continue to dance the dance of the death in the mighty name of Jesus. Shut fire! I'm about to close. 
was Paul the Apostle that made a statement. I love this. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. You said the Lord is faithful. Yeah. Turn to somebody and tell you, you serve a faithful God. Tell them, I serve a faithful God. Ah, Paul the apostle. He said, but the Lord is faithful. Did they tell you you will die young? And you also, you are making plans to die young. No, the number of your days, God will fulfill for you. You are not going to die young. Everything you have acquired, you will spend everything. You will hand it over to your children. You will hand it over to your children's children. You will fly. Your plane will not crash. You will go on the sea. Your boat will not capsize. You will walk on the sidewalk. No car will hit you. I prophesy it for your life. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost. Say! Fire! <laughs> Some boy scouts, boy scouts, boy scouts in Nassau County, boy scouts. They were going on a hike, small boys. They were going on a hike, innocent boys. They were going on a hike. Unfortunately for them, on that hike, divine protection did not follow them. So you know what the devil did? He sent a drunk driver. An old man. Drunk driver. He just left the road and ran into them. Injured four of them and killed a beautiful 12-year-old boy. And they were in court on Friday. And they thought the man was going to plead guilty and make just get a plea deal and let this thing be over. The man came and he said, not guilty. So the pain continues. Ah, what will bring you pain will not be your portion. You didn't hear my prayer. I said, what will bring you pain will not bring your portion. Can I pray for your children? Ah, hey, as you see them going to school, you will see them coming back from school. In the mighty name of Jesus, now the school has become a place we had people go and shoot. I don't care how many gunmen come to your school, to, to your children's school. Your children will come out untouched. Your children will come out unscatched. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say, I receive it for my children. But the Lord is faithful. That's what, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we are living on. Honestly. If we are to live on our holiness, uh, you, you holy, you, or you want me to tell you your story? If we are to live on our righteousness, if we are to live on our prayerfulness, I'm very prayerful. If we are to live on our fasting and praying, you with your pot belly, when last did you fast? It's the faithfulness of God. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promise. He's faithful to his mercy. He's faithful to his kindness. He watches over you day in and day out. He that watches over Israel, uh, he never slumbers uh, and he never sleeps. Uh, he keeps you. He watches over you. He protects you. No wonder Paul the apostle said, God is faithful. Come on, help me give him a big hand. Uh, Lord, we thank you. You're a faithful God. We thank you. You're a faithful God. We thank you, you are a faithful God. Thank you, you are a faithful God. We thank you, you are a faithful God. We thank you, you are a faithful God. We thank you, you are a faithful God. Listen, it's not the doctor that did the surgery and it was successful. Don't thank the doctor alone. Go to your closet and say, faithful God. I thank you. I thank you for guiding the hand of the doctor. I thank you for watching over this surgery. I thank you because everything went well. Haven't people gone for surgery and they forget instruments in their stomach? Haven't people gone for surgery? They are supposed to amputate the left leg and they end up amputating the right leg. And they come back to amputate the left leg also. And they say, sorry, it was a mistake. Yeah, you can sue them, but you cannot get your leg back. 
May God watch over you. May God protect you. May God keep you. And you're going out and you're coming in. I'm seeing you today. May I see you tomorrow. You are seeing me today. May you see me tomorrow. When we see each other, we should be thanking God. You are protected. You are protected. You are protected. You will continue to be protected. The Lord is faithful. You know what it says after that? Who shall establish you? And who shall keep you from not some evil, not many evil, not most evils? It says he shall keep you from all evil. I pray for you this morning that everywhere you go, God will keep you from all evil. Those of you who are nurses, you walk in a very dangerous environment. You can go home and return, you can go to work and return home with an incurable disease that somebody passed over to you. Do you know you can fly on an airplane and catch diseases? Because the person beside you has hepatitis or the person beside you has measles or has chicken pox. And before you realize it, you get home, you become sick. Why did they put you on a seat beside somebody who is sick? Why did they not put somebody else there? My friends, divine protection will move you to the right place at the right time everywhere you go. And no matter what evil happens, I pray I will see your face again. Two Mondays ago. <laughs> Two Mondays ago. Two Mondays ago. Two Mondays ago. I was in Manila, Philippines. My host wanted to lodge me as a big man. He put me on the 15th floor. That's the last floor of the hotel. 15th floor. Big room, big bed, with kitchen. We did the meeting on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The meeting ended on Sunday. Sunday I said, you know what, I'm just going to rest and uh, come back to the United States on Thursday. <laughs> I pray for you. The plan that you have, huh? May what you don't plan for not spoil your plan. You don't understand. You don't understand. You don't understand. It was in the afternoon. I was sitting in my room, actually on the bed. And I was talking to somebody FaceTime on the phone. And I was laughing. How are you? God bless you. Where are you, daddy? I'm in Manila, Philippines. I will soon be leaving this place. All of a sudden, all of, I've never seen him before. My building began to dance. Shoki dance. My building was going and I'm not in the first floor. I'm not in the second floor. I said, what is this? The person that I was talking about thought I suddenly became mental. I said, what is this? Zzz. The phone in my hand was going, zzz. Zzz. my bed. Oh, my bed. My bed. Has your bed ever moved? My bed moved, oh. My bed was moving like this. Zzz. 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 And the building was swinging like this. And swinging like that. And I was saying, in the name of Jesus. In the name. Uh, we told you to pray. You don't pray. You will pray by force. Oh. Ah, ah, ah. Somebody said, I cannot pray without season. May God not let you see what will make you pray without season. I was saying, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over you building. It's not the building. No. It's something underneath the building. It is called earthquake. It is 6.5 on the rector scale. Major earthquake. Because the whole city of Manila is built on a fault. On an earthquake fault. So it's normal in that place. And the big one is coming. Who says 6.5 is not big? It was going like this. I say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over you building. Is this earthquake or what? God, I didn't come to Manila to die. I didn't come here to die. Jesus. My wife is at home. 
she just escaped death. And then, and then, then, then what am I going to say? That I die here. Lord, my family is now here. Then I said that that's not prayer. In the name of Jesus. 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 The person I was talking about saw that something was going on. And said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. It's not Jesus we are talking about. We are talking about some. I said, this one, we talk about Jesus. We talk about Jesus. We talk about Jesus. I'm too much. I'm telling you what happened. And then the thing stopped. Have you ever prayed for something to stop? And after it stops for a while, it starts again. I said, Jesus, didn't you hear my prayer? Oh, in the name. I told the person, I will call you back. This one is not a matter of phone now. In the name of Jesus, I have to find my way out of this building. I don't know how I'm going to get out of here, but I'm getting out of this building. If this thing is going to crush, it's not going to crush me. I did not wear my shoes. I didn't even know I had shoes. I didn't know that when you go out into the open, you must wear your shoes. I forgot my shoes. Oh. Then I came out into the hallway like this. And the hallway was going in the name of Jesus. In the name. I said, this is earthquake. This is earthquake. Then I had to make a decision. Should I go into the elevator? Or should I go down 15 floors? Did you hear me? Somebody like me? 15 floors? I will be dead on the ninth floor. Fifteen floors to Fiacqua. So I said, whatever happens, I will go inside this elevator, whether he likes it or not. I got in front of the elevator, the light went off. This way and that. I didn't know I could dance without a drummer. And then finally they brought the light back. I said, God, two minutes I will be downstairs. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I was in the elevator like this, like this, like this, and like that, like that. And like this, finally I saw G, ground floor. Come and see your bishop run. You've never seen me run. Come, hey, hey, I didn't know I can run for my life. I took off. A lady was talking to me. I said, come back for road. And then I got outside. I saw many people, many people outside. You know what I see? When God gets ready to wipe us out, it doesn't take him one second. You who is saying there's no God, I don't have time for God, I don't have time for this, I don't have time for that. When trouble comes, you will have time for God. I sat down outside and I was looking at the building like this. I said, in this place that I'm sitting now, if this thing comes, I was making mental calculation. Okay, 15th floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. 15th floor has passed where I'm sitting. So I called the wife of my friend. I said, Auntie, are you still upstairs? Ah, she said, Bishop, Bishop, you have come out. I said, I've come out. Oh, I said, You better come out. She said, Me? He said, It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm saying, I said, No, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. come out. Jesus is saying to you, Come out of the building. Jesus is saying, Come out of the building. then finally I said if this thing falls because behind me is Pacific Ocean so where do I run to I cannot st- look it's divine protection you need divine protection you need finally everything settled down and everybody went back in guess who was the last person to go in When the friend, the wife of my friend said she's going in, I said, yeah. I said, I want to, I feel led to stay here for a while. I feel led to stay. In the night, I never slept. Oh. In, which sleep? This is how I open my eyes. And even when the building is not moving, I feel the building is moving. And I was calculating, Thursday come, Thursday come, please come. Please. There's something they call aftershock. It's not up to 6.5. But I woke up at 2 a.m. again. I think it was Wednesday night. Was doing like this. <laughs> I said, before anybody tells me to move, I went downstairs again at 2 a.m. in the morning. And I asked the people in the front desk, Did you see the movement? They said, Reverend, you are afraid? I said, No, you don't be afraid. 
You don't be afraid. You don't be afraid. Who wants to die? Nobody wants to die. But at the end of the day, I'm standing before you this morning. I'm standing before you safe. I'm standing before you sound. I'm standing before you. No earthquake shall kill you. No earthquake shall kill you. About 26 people. About 26 people died in that earthquake. But here I am standing before you. When they are counting the dead, they will not count you. When they are counting those who are lost, they will not count you. You will go in peace. No matter what happens, you will come back in peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout fire. Shout fire. Shout fire. I want to ask you this afternoon. What do you need? Divine. I'm asking you. What do you need? I'm asking you for the last time. What do you need? Stand up on your feet and tell the Lord. Protect me all the time. Protect my children all the time. Protect everything that is connected to me all the time. Lord, I ask for divine, 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 divine protection. Divine protection as I go out and as I come in. No matter what the enemy, enemy plans, may they never succeed against my life. May I always be washed over. May I always be protected. In the mighty, 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 mighty name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and tell God. Lord, protect me in the morning. Protect me in the afternoon. Protect me in the noon day. Protect me in the noon time. As my children go out, let them come back intact. In the name of Jesus. Tomorrow morning, I will be gone again to look for what to eat. Don't let me find something that will me. In the name of Jesus. Protection upon my life. In the name of Jesus. They asked him what he needed. He said, I don't need anything. But there's something I know I need this morning. There's something I know you need this morning. It is called divine protection I pray for each and every one of you even as we anoint you with oil this afternoon that God will be with you in your going out that God will be with you in your coming in you've escaped death many 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 times you will continue to escape your children will continue to escape. Your spouse will continue to escape. Every attack will lead to an elongation of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that God will keep you from all the evil that is present in this world. That no hand of wickedness will be able to cut your life short. You will have horses. You will have silver. You will have gold. And you will have life to enjoy it. In the name of Jesus. I pray that prayer for you as we anoint you with oil now. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. Put your hands together and give the Lord a big hand. In the name of Jesus.